the Doppler effect, very famous part of physics. It has to do with sound when something is moving. So if we have a source of sound, speaker here, sending its sound out, and then it's going to something like your ear. I guess that's your ear. Um, I'm going to plot the pressure wave. So we know sound is a wave of pressure. We know it's moving this way. We know it has some frequency. It has some wavelength because it's moving at some speed. All right? So we'll say that the frequency this thing sends out is F0. It's sending out F0. And normally, if you have a speaker and you have your ear, your ear hears the same frequency that was made. Right? We all hear the same thing. But now, let's imagine one of these two things is moving. Okay, let's make uh, your ear move. So now, again, speaker, axis, your ear is here, but now your ear has some velocity. I'm going to get rid of that so we don't get confused. Your ear is moving towards the speaker, but the speaker is making the same sound wave. Right? The speaker is still making it at F0. But let's think about what your ear actually hears. What is the frequency part? The frequency part doesn't care about the wavelength. The frequency is just how often do I hear it go from high pressure to low pressure, high pressure to low pressure, high pressure to low pressure. So if you sit in one place along this wave and you just measure how, how, how fast does it go from high to low, high to low, high to low, that's F0. But now think about this ear that's moving. If it's moving, it gets to the highs and lows faster than if it just sat still. So the um, the, the motion causes the receiver um, to hear the wave. I'm going to say hear it faster, because maybe that will help you, help you remember it. Hear the wave faster. Or you might want to call that higher frequency. is the way you could think of this. So you will actually hear a higher tone. The equation we have for this is that the frequency you hear would be the frequency that was emitted by the stationary object over a factor on the bottom, 1 minus, and then the velocity, in this case of the receiver, over the velocity of sound. Right? So this is the frequency the receiver would hear. So your ear here is there's a receiver earring for your ear. Would hear it higher. The same thing would be true if the speaker of the source were moving. Right? If the source were moving, it would be making the waves, and you'd have a difference in frequency between the source uh, and the receiver. This, of course, explains the famous train sound. When a train is coming at you, you hear it's kind of a higher pitch than it should be, although you don't know that until the train goes by you. And then it's a lower pitch. Right? So if the train is coming at you, this is a positive number. And this is a number, usually the speed of sound is pretty fast, the train's pretty slow. This is a really small positive number. 1 minus a positive number is like 0.99. When you divide by that, it makes the frequency higher. Right? The ear hears the higher frequency. But when the train goes away from you, suddenly this becomes a small number, or a negative number. And this over this is a small negative number. And 1 minus a small negative number is 1 plus a small number. So this is a little bit more than 1. So F0 over something a little more than 1 means the frequency goes down. Right. So for the exact same reason, when the ear moves away, it hears the highs and lows slower, so the frequency goes down. So that's the famous train sound. When it's coming at you, ree, and then it goes by you, ree, right. you've heard that before. So that's where that comes from. Simple application of the Doppler effect.